What is going on you guys? AK40 Kevin here in the Gamer Heaven. So as you guys have probably already seen, we have unboxed, set up, and reviewed, as well as disassembled and fully customized the Razer Viper Ultimate, as well as the Razer Viper Mini over here. Both fantastic mice. This one is a wired compact, and this one is the lightest wireless mouse on the market. But now it's time to unbox, set up, and review the mouse that started it all, which is the regular wired Viper here. And this thing is pretty doggone sweet. Let's get it. Alrighty guys, over here at the unboxing desk with the Razer Viper. This package is a little bit beat up. I guess the Amazon drivers was playing bumper cars over there in the warehouse or something. But anyway, as long as the product inside is undamaged, that is all I care about. So, some of the features of this mouse before we break into this lovely lime green packaging that Razer is famous for. This does have the optical switches, just like both the Viper Ultimate and the Viper Mini, meaning it's not traditional mechanical switches. They're actually a light beam that gets broken in there. What that means is they're about a third as loud or as noisy as traditional mechanical switches and they also actuate quicker as well. So lightning fast response and also significantly quieter, which I think the quietness factor is a bigger pro or selling feature for me personally because I like to stream and also just screen record for screen record gameplay for YouTube footage and not having to hear the click of my mechanical keyboard plus a mouse is really nice because these are really quiet. This does also have eight programmable buttons. You will need to have Razer Synapse 3 application set up for that. This does have the Razer SpeedFlex cable, so just a little marketing gimmick name there, the old Hyper Tomahawk Deluxe SpeedFlex cable. But honestly, uh, I gotta say, it actually is rather impressive. The SpeedFlex cable is also on the Viper Mini over here, and not only is it stupid light, but unlike a traditional braided cable, it's kind of woven with like a microfiber material that really just glides across your mouse pad. So if you do not like being wireless, I don't know why, wireless technology has gotten amazing now. There's like literally zero latency or lag. But um, if you prefer to be wired or, you know, this mouse is in your price point, but the Ultimate is not or something like that, um, the SpeedFlex cable is a very close second to being completely wireless, so that's very, very nice. So weight-wise, this drops right in the middle of the family at 69 grams. The Viper Mini is 65, and the Viper Ultimate is 74, which is astronomically light for a wireless mouse. Um, but yes, so very, very light. The, that's kind of the main selling point of the Viper series, besides the optical switches, is how dang light they are. And also, ergonomically, um, I've tested many, many mice, Steel Series, Corsair... Razer models, HyperX, etc. Um, ergonomically, these work phenomenally well for my hand size. I have pretty average North American hands. I'm 5'11", 175 pounds. And um, not only can you, you can kind of hit all three grips comfortably, palm, claw, and fingertip, no problemo, which is um, surprising, especially for the Viper Mini. I did not expect to be able to palm grip with that thing, considering it is a compact, but it's not that compact compared to like what you're thinking of with maybe like a, a productivity travel mouse you would throw in your bag for a business trip or something. This also has a 5G optical sensor in here, onboard DPI storage or dots per inch, that's the sensitivity of your mouse. You will not be able to store your profiles as far as button mappings and lighting. That has to be open through the Razer Synapse 3 application, but you can store your sensitivity on board. So if you go to a buddy's house that doesn't have the Synapse 3 app on his computer, you plug this bad boy in, and you're, you have your uh, DPI in an onboard profile, which is really, really nice. So let's go ahead and break into this bad boy. Enough jaw jacking and lip smacking. For gamers, by gamers. Marketing, marketing. Pulling this little tab right here. You get this thank you letter from the CEO with every single Razer product, you know, telling you this product is the bee's knees and the mule's nips. This thing is sweet. It's gonna rock your FPS games to the maximum. You're gonna be taking more headshots than a cameraman and leaving more shells than a beach, basically, is what they're trying to say with this here. Then you have your instruction manual right here. And of course, stickers, boys. It is not an authentic Razer product unless you get these holographic stickers here. You gotta get the stickers. I don't know what people do with them. Sticker bomb their bumper, the side of their PC case or something like that. And then you have your instruction manual. And in proper Razer fashion, it has a lot of lime green in there to go with that signature color. Um, but it is very informative. English is the primary language, good font. Uh, it's got pictures in there. Not the prettiest instruction manual, but it gets the job done. You have your SpeedFlex cable here in the back. 
flipping it over, you have the mouse. Now this isn't the best quality Razer packaging on some of their more premium models, such as the Naga and the Viper Ultimate. You are gonna have laser cut foam in there and a little bit more premium packaging in different segments. So price wise, the Viper Mini is $40 MSRP. The Viper is $80, and then the Viper Ultimate is $130. That's with the dock, which there is a version without the dock, but like it's hard to find, and why would you want it without the dock, considering that's one of the coolest features, is it has like an RGB charging dock that you just place your mouse on there, puts it on display, and charges it and stuff. So, um, so yeah, 40, 80, and 130. So So everything in the Viper family, the three models, kind of line up with each other in different in different segments. So price-wise, the Viper Mini is $40 MSRP, the Viper is $80, and then the Viper Ultimate is $130. That's with the dock, which there is a version without the dock, but like it's hard to find, and why would you want it without the dock, considering that's one of the coolest features, is it has like an RGB charging dock that you just place your mouse on there, puts it on display, and charges it and stuff. So, um, so yeah, 40, 80, and 130. So, and then also like the onboard optical sensors, 8,500 DPI on the Mini, 16,000 on the Viper, and 20,000 on the Viper Ultimate. But they all do share the same shape, or they all do share the same shape, the optical switches, the form factor is a little smaller on the Mini, obviously. Speed flex cable on both of these, wireless on the Ultra. I am gonna make a separate video going a little more in depth comparing the three models, going real in depth with the skates, um, you know, the internals of the chip, as well as just everyday performance of, across the three models. So make sure you subscribe so you're aware when that video comes online. Just a little shameless plug for the channel. Shove a thumb up there that helps this video to get seen by more people as my channel is rather small and I'm trying to get discovered. And uh, YouTube is not discovery channel over here. You have to really, mm, really pull out the, the stops to get discovered here, guys. So anyway, pulling this bad boy out of its shell here. Again, not the best packaging, but as long as the core product's good, the box really doesn't matter too much. So you have an eight foot speed flex cable here. So you have a six foot speed cable here. So you have a six foot speed flex cable here, which has a little dust protector for the USB connector. It is Razer branded, of course. You also have a little rubber tie back for the cable when you are storing it. Peeling off this protective film on the bottom. 16,000 DPI or dots per inch sensor in there. You have your DPI switch on the bottom here, which I'm gonna speak more on this in the comparison, but I will say real quick, I do not like where it's placed on the Viper and the Viper Ultimate on the bottom here. I like it being on the top on the Viper Mini. You, you don't have time in a competitive match of Call of Duty or Battlefield to look at the bottom of your mouse, switch your DPI profile, you're gonna get killed three times over before you're done with that. So having it on top, um, it just makes more sense to me. You pick up a sniper rifle or something, you wanna drop the sensitivity down to get some real finite, precise movements, you can do that. Scroll wheel is virtually the same across all models, nice distinct steps, good rubberized grip, satisfying click, has the same, opti has the same optical switches. Very, very satisfying to click. You need virtually minimal uh, strength or effort to depress them. Very, very nice. Side buttons are also identical. Side buttons are also identical to the Viper Ultimate over here. You can press them cleanly with the ball and tip of your thumb for both buttons, and they work. They're not perfect. They could be a little bit bigger and a little bit more raised out of the shell, but overall work very well. It does also have some very nice rubberized coating on the side, same as the Viper Ultimate. The Viper Mini has no... Um, no grip on it whatsoever. It's just a hard plastic shell. However, this bad boy has been customized and does have some aftermarket grips on it, as you can see. Now, I will say a big, now I will say a noticeable downgrade here on the Viper that the Viper Mini and the Ultimate have is the skates. These are the, 
these are the stock skates that come on the Viper Mini. The Viper Ultimate does also come with white skates, but these are some, um, but these are some aftermarket black ones here. Um, but the PBT, but the white ones that come on the Viper Ultimate are phenomenal. And these Razor, these stock Razor black ones are okay. They get the job done. They're not bad, but they're not as good as the skates that come on the Viper Ultimate and the Viper Mini. Speed Flex cable, which again, like I said, is stupid light and very, very flexible, almost like being wireless, which is great. And then ergonomically, like I said, you can palm grip, you can claw grip, and you can fingertip grip phenomenally with this mouth. So with that rubberized grip on the side and the fact that it is very light, um, this thing is super flicky, super maneuverable. So if you're a competitive first person shooter, that's why in the esports world, these Vipers have kind of taken over the scene. All right, guys, let's plug it into the PC, get the initial drivers installed, and I'll walk you guys through the Razer Synapse 3 application. We'll do a little gameplay with this bad boy, and I'll give you guys my final thoughts. Yeah, baby, you too. And then also, like the onboard optical sensors, 8,500 DPI on the Mini, 16,000 on the Viper, and 20,000 on the Viper Ultimate. They all do share the same shape, the optical switches, the form factor is a little smaller on the Mini, obviously. Speed flex cable on both of these, wireless on the Ultra. I am gonna make a separate video going a little more in depth comparing the three models, going real in depth. The skates, um, you know, the internals of the chip, as well as just everyday performance of, across the three models. So make sure you subscribe so you're aware when that video comes online. Just a little shameless plug for the channel. Shove a thumb up there that helps this video to get seen by more people as my channel is rather small and I'm trying to get discovered. And uh, YouTube is not discovery channel over here. You have to really, really pull out the, the stops to get discovered here, guys. So anyway, pulling this bad boy out of its shell here. Again, not the best packaging, but as long as the core product's good, the box really doesn't matter too much. So you have a six foot speed flex cable here, which has a little dust protector for the USB connector. It is Razer branded, of course. You also have a little rubber tie back for the cable when you are storing it. Peeling off this protective film on the bottom. 16,000 DPI or dots per inch sensor in there. You have your DPI switch on the bottom here, which I'm gonna speak more on this in the comparison, but I will say real quick, I do not like where it's placed on the Viper and the Viper Ultimate on the bottom here. I like it being on the top on the Viper Mini. You, you don't have time in a competitive match of Call of Duty or Battlefield to look at the bottom of your mouse, switch your DPI profile, you're gonna get killed three times over before you're done with that. So. Having it on top, um, it just makes more sense to me. You pick up a sniper rifle or something, you wanna drop the sensitivity down to get some real finite, precise movements, you can do that. Scroll wheel is virtually the same across all models. Nice distinct steps, good rubberized grip, satisfying click, has the same, opti has the same optical switches. Very, very satisfying to click. You need virtually minimal uh, strength or effort to depress them. Very, very nice. Side buttons are also identical. Side buttons are also identical to the Viper Ultimate over here. You can press them cleanly with the ball and tip of your thumb for both buttons and they work. They're not perfect. They could be a little bit bigger and a little bit more raised out of the shell but overall work very well. It does also have some very nice rubberized coating on the side, same as the Viper Ultimate. The Viper Mini has no um, no grip on it whatsoever. It's just a hard plastic shell. However, this bad boy has been customized and does have some aftermarket grips on it, as you can see. Now, I will say a big... Now I will say a noticeable downgrade here on the Viper that the Viper Mini and the Ultimate have is the skates. These are the these are the stock skates that come on the Viper Mini. The Viper Ultimate does also come with white skates, but these are some um, but these are some aftermarket black ones here. Um, but the PBT but the white ones that come on the Viper Ultimate are phenomenal, and these. Razor, these stock Razor black ones are okay. They get the job done. They're not bad, but they're not as good as the skates that come on the Viper Ultimate and the Viper Mini. 
Speed Flex cable, which again, like I said, is stupid light and very, very flexible, almost like being wireless, which is great. And then ergonomically, like I said, you can palm grip, you can claw grip, and you can fingertip grip phenomenally with this mouth. So with that rubberized grip on the side and the fact that it is very light, um, this thing is super flicky, super maneuverable. So if you're a competitive first person shooter, that's why in the esports world, these Vipers have kind of taken over the scene. All right, guys, let's plug it into the PC, get the initial drivers installed, and I'll walk you guys through the Razer Synapse 3 application. We'll do a little gameplay with this bad boy, and I'll give you guys my final thoughts. Alrighty, boys, over here at the Stormtrooper PC, the first time you plug in a Razer device, it is going to prompt you to install an update in the Synapse 3 app. If you do not have the Synapse 3 app, it will prompt you to install that. If it does not, just go ahead and Google Razer software or Razer app or Razer Synapse. That'll all take you to the first result, which is going to be the Razer Synapse 3 application, which is what you use to control uh, all of your Razer devices, so keyboards, mice, headsets, whatever. Alrighty guys, over here at my PC, gonna go ahead and share my screen. We are inside the Razer Synapse 3 application. So it actually didn't prompt a Windows 10 restart, which is the first uh, I've ever experienced. And I've tested many Razer products, mice, keyboards, headsets, etc. So Razer Viper over here. I will do a separate tutorial, a walkthrough, if you will, of the Razer Synapse 3 application, how to get it set up with Philips Hue lighting for your room, uh, nano leaf on your wall, stuff like that. But for this tutorial, we're just gonna come over here to the Razer Viper Ultimate. First tab is customize. You are gonna be able to remap any of the buttons here, including scroll wheel and the side buttons to do Windows multimedia functions, such as turn your volume up and down, launch an application if you want to. If you're just gonna use this strictly for gaming, I would leave all these default and then go ahead and just remap in game, in the game settings. Over here in performance, oh, and you can also set this up for if you are using it right or left-handed and it will swap all the switches or uh, switch all, swap all your buttons around. Now, I'm left-handed and I game with the mouse in my right hand. I think most left-handed gamers do. I've never actually met a lefty that plays with a left-handed mouse. But anyway, performance over here, you do have uh, a maximum of five different DPI modes. If you only want two, you know, one for sniping, one for close quarters stuff, you can set that up or you can have five, or you can just turn them off completely, which is what I do. And then that gives me uh, an extra remappable button for that DPI switch. Now, granted on the Viper and Viper Ultimate, that button's on the bottom, so I can't really do anything with that. Uh, on the Viper Mini and other models like the Lance Head, it's up on top, which is really nice, um, but I'm just gonna put in my default DPI. I know that sounds like a lot for first person shooters, 1800, but, I turned it down a little bit in game and it works just fine. Polling rate is how many times your mouse and your PC are gonna ping information back and forth. This is more of a big deal on wireless because it refreshes the connectivity, but for wired, just leave it at the default, which is the highest value of 1000. Uh, mouse properties here in Windows, the only thing I would set is over here in pointer options. Make sure that this box, enhance pointer precision, is turned off. By default, it is on. And then also just make sure that your pointer speed is right there in the meat in the medium at the default setting and then you can just adjust your dpi inside this application here over here lighting of course this is your rgb or chroma effects and uh, you know if you're on a wireless mouse i would recommend turning the brightness down to about 33 percent or turning it off completely to save juice as this is wired you can do whatever the heck you want you know just leave it on same thing, I would turn both these on if you are wireless because that'll save battery life. With a wired, it doesn't really matter. You have your regular default quick settings over here. So a static color, breathing, etc. Or you can do advanced settings, which basically lets you go into the Razer Studio application and set up all your devices. I do also have Razer headphones, but they're turned off right now. And they can all be coordinated to do the same effect uh, across the board. This is also my motherboard inside my PC case, and that can also coordinate with these devices as well. Calibration over here. The default calibration for just a generic mouse pad actually works really well, but you can add a surface, which is really cool. Um, these are all the different models of mouse pads that Razer offers. Um, I don't know if all these are still in production because on their website, I don't think it shows this many mouse pads, but you can set up a custom one, which I would highly recommend doing. So I'm gonna set my mouse pad, or I'm um, sorry, my keyboard up and out of the way. And we're gonna go ahead and start a, uh, a test real quick. So you click down the left and then you're gonna go in a ziggity zag pattern and then up and down, around and take her to pound town. 
And what this is doing right now, it's scrolling across your mouse pad, obviously, and it's getting used to the surface. Should take about eh, 30 seconds or so. It's a quick test, and it's so worth it because it unlocks a new option that you can set up, which is pretty cool. I don't know why I'm moving my whole body, but hopefully that helps. Yeah, that's how I game, boys. All right, sweet. We're done. So now, as you see, I'm calibrated for this part, this specific mouse pad over here. And granted, it feels almost identical to the default setting, but since this is calibrated for my mouse pad, that's what I'm going to keep it at. I will say these stock skates are actually pretty darn good. Um, they're not as good as the Viper Ultimate or Mini with those white skates, but it's they're still good. Razor stock skates, even the black ones are good. The white ones are just as good as aftermarket skates like G skate. So I wouldn't recommend upgrading because it's not an upgrade. You're paying for skates that are the same performance. Uh, but when you add a new mouse surface, you will now have this lift off range over here, which sure enough, if you are a competitive first person shooter player and you want to be doing lift offs off your mouse pad to get it to stop registering your movements, you can set up how many millimeters off of the mouse pad you can be in order to have the mouse still registering from the sensor, which is really, really cool. I'm going to leave it at the default of three, but um, I personally don't do liftoffs because I'm not some kind of sweat lord stallion when it comes to first person shooters. But if you guys are out there snapping wrists, G fuel dripping off the mustache stallion, then you can set this up. That's going to do it for the Razer Synapse 3 application. We're all set up and hot to trot. Let's hop into a little gameplay here and see how she performs. Alrighty boys, got my lucky candy cane here and it's time to go hunt for the ho-ho-hos. So anyway, the Viper is kind of the middle brother here and the way I see it, it doesn't really get a lot of love. Like the Mini is a super good budget. It's the cheapest option at $40, which is half the price of the the Viper Ultimate, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the Viper and a less than third of the price of the Viper Ultimate and has that small form factor, which a lot of people might prefer. It's got those kick-ass skates. It has the DPI button on top. And it has a ton of aftermarket support with companies that produce grips and aftermarket skates and all that good stuff. Then you have the Viper Ultimate, which is basically lauded or regarded as one of the best mice in the world for first-person shooters, as it is extremely light. It's wireless, has a 20K DPI sensor, all that good stuff. And then the Viper is just kind of in the middle there. It's almost considered the missionary position mouse. It's It'll get the job done. It's enjoyable, but it's not really what people go for. It's not what they'd prefer. They would prefer the, um, the Viper Mini, doggy style, reverse cowgirl ultimate. And the Viper is a great mouse, but because its siblings are so damned good and have more to offer. You know, you want budget, you want a small compact design, great aftermarket support, a DPI button on top, um, side buttons that are raised out of the shell a little bit better, then go for the Mini. You want literally what is regarded as basically the one of the best mice in the world, you go for the Ultimate. Which kind of leaves the Viper... No matter how great it is, which it is a great mouse, just kind of left with its cheese out in the wind. Speaking of cheese out in the wind, I forgot that this is the only game in history where you can shoot somebody close range uh, with a shotgun in the face and doesn't kill them. I was truly flabbergasted by that. But anyway, that's neither here nor there. All this gameplay is with the Viper, by the way, and it's awesome because it has the same exact form factor, same shell, same ergonomic design as the Viper Ultimate. It literally feels just like the Viper Ultimate, except you have a wire, you have a little bit less um, DPI, which does not really matter at all because when you're playing a shooter, you're going to be between 800 and, you know, 2000 at the most DPI. So when you have like a 20,000, 16,000 DPI sensor, that's more for bragging rights at the bar. You're not really going to have your thing cranked up that high at all. So that's why like even the mini with 8,500 DPI, it doesn't matter. It's still less than you're actually going to use. Look at this camper right here, sleeping bag out, a little French press full of copy, coffee. I uh, decided to go for a little dip here. And then I forgot his friend was sleeping over here in the corner. I didn't even see that guy over there. He was just trying to bite some ankles or whatever. So here's what I'm going to say. I don't think the Viper is really worth $80. I feel like the Mini's a better value and then spend that money to get some upgrades for it, like some uh, grips for the side as it doesn't have any rubberized grips, or save up a little extra quiche and get the Ultimate. However, the Viper, I just checked today, it's on sale for like $40. That's half off. This is on Amazon. This is linked in the description below. I don't know how long that sale is going to last, 
But for $40, that is a phenomenal value. That's the same MSRP as the Mini, but the Mini's on sale for 30 bucks. So Amazon's running a super deluxe sale right now on those bad boys. But overall, the Viper feels amazing. It feels just like the Viper Ultimate, but with a cord. Uh, it literally, it, it, it's it's the same mouse, more or less. There's Other than being wired, which that, that SpeedFlex cable is super light. You don't really notice it that much because it's light and it's super flexible. And it just kind of glides along your mouse pad, never gets caught on anything. Um, you don't really even need a mouse bungee or anything. It just kind of feels like it's not there, which is great. Um, so overall, it is a great mouse. I just feel like it's kind of overshadowed by its siblings because they both have more to offer, you know? Um, but, it, but it is a good mouse. I have no real complaints about it whatsoever. I do wish that they would put the DPI switch on the top. Other than that, I think that is my only gripe. And that is a little nitpicky, but that is like a, that is a mentionable thing is that if they were just to move the DPI switch to the top, which I'm sure they had some reason why they didn't do that, but... If they were just to put the DPI switch on the top, um, this I would have zero complaints about this mouse. And it's just, it's phenomenal. It fits great in the hand. It's super ergonomic. You can palm, claw, and fingertip grip, which is great. So it's versatile. You don't need to have a different mouse for different gameplay styles or anything like that. And it's just, oh, it glides good. Even with the, the black skates, which are like their lesser model, um, it's still an amazing mouse. Yeah.